escort on either side of the gun carriage, formed by 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards. You'll notice that their arms are reversed. The swords are turned backwards. The rifles turn back with the left arm to hold the muzzle down, all as an act of respect for the late Queen. Garrison Sergeant Major, Mr. Stokes, who has been preparing these soldiers, leads the King and his siblings and other members of the royal family. And in the rear rank of that family, the Earl of Snowden and the Duke of Gloucester. scarlet tunics of the dismounted lifeguards from the Household Cavalry Regiment leading this parade as the senior regiment of the British Army. from the end where Buckingham Palace stands by the great statue of Queen Victoria. One late sovereign watches our latest departed queen make her way towards Westminster, the heart of the nation's constitution. One might surmise that the late Queen would most have her interest in the horses taking part after a lifetime loving anything equestrian. She made the point that the King's troop who convey her now with their horses and their gun carriage would keep the name her father had given of King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery. They held that title all through her reign. And now we have a new king.
At the center of the imperial state crown, there are four pearl earrings that hang from the arches where they cross. These are supposed to have come from Scotland and to have been worn once by Mary, Queen of Scots. sapphire in the cross at the top, supposedly taken from the ring finger of King Edward the Confessor when his coffin was translated from one part of Westminster Abbey to the other by King Henry III in the 1200s. And watching with eminent pride as their daughter passes by, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother as we remember her, and King George VI. Procession will shortly turn towards the right and pass into horse guards by way of horse guards approach road. taking on the sovereign responsibility at the death of his mother must add a great burden to these first days of kingship. United Kingdom flags that adorn the entire length of the Mull give way in horse guards to the flags of Commonwealth countries, including the other realms of which the Queen was sovereign head and sovereign, and of the Commonwealth itself, which was the heart of so much that she dedicated her reign to support.
was on this corner in 1981 that the Queen was riding to her birthday parade, trooping the colour, and someone with a starting pistol fired shots towards her. No one necessarily knew it was just a starting pistol, and it was a reminder of the courage that must sometimes be required in public life to always be at the centre of public events. But the Queen very quickly recovered her horse and with immense composure took the entire parade as Colonel-in-Chief of the regiment trooping its colour. The Queen Consort, Princess of Wales, the Countess of Wessex and Forfa, and the Duchess of Sussex leave the palace and will pass up Birdcage Walk and into Parliament Square and alight in Palace Yard outside Westminster Hall, awaiting the arrival of the cortege bringing the late Queen. Queen Elizabeth II was born on the 21st of April, 1926. And April being a bad month for weather, normally in the United Kingdom, she also used to have an official birthday in the early weeks of June. And always that was marked with the Queen's Birthday Parade here in Horse Guards. And as she passes through, our memories can go back to the countless times on horseback, at the side of her father, the king, or as sovereign, or in carriage in later years. She took that salute from her household division.
passing under horse guards arch marks the departure from the royal grounds and this was always the main entrance of the palaces and those palaces bid the queen well on this her last public engagement sashes that members of the royal family wear the most noble order of the garter in this case given to each of them by the queen as the order's sovereign head turning left into Whitehall and towards Parliament Square they will shortly pass the entrance to 10 Downing Street and for the Queen's constitutional life she appointed 14 Prime Ministers inheriting one in Sir Winston Churchill her 15th when she arrived as sovereign unveiled this women at war memorial with the clothes hanging on it that were worn by women helping in the war effort or fighting themselves from 1939 to 1945 of course in 1945 the queen herself as princess elizabeth joined the army in the auxiliary territorial force and in that service she provided her small part towards the defeat of the tyranny in Nazi Germany. at the rear of this procession the blues and royals who also form part of the household cavalry dismounted bringing the rear of this procession last november the queen was unable to take part in the annual act of remembrance at the cenotaph but she had been to almost every annual remembrance and she had stood in front of the cenotaph beside her father too. Her own wartime memories merged with those of new generations as so many of her armed forces served on operations during her reign.
at its top, the cenotaph has the empty tomb for the thoughts and memories of all those families who were affected by war. dead of wars, acknowledging in silence the sovereign whose father and grandfather led them in the First and Second World War. And so many of those who died during the Queen's reign in the Army, Navy and Air Force. Around the gun carriage, the military aquaries who served the Queen from the Royal Navy, the Army and the Air Force, taking their place as pallbearers for the sovereign they served, whilst 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards march on either side of them, guarding Elizabeth II. Scots Guards have carried out this task today with their director of music. And the Major General commanding the Household Division, Major General Skika, whose troops, including these, the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery, are playing their part in saluting this former sovereign. Queen's personal staff marching in a row there, the palace steward, two of her pages. They would have been in close attendance on the Queen day by day throughout her life. The Queen passes the statue of Sir Winston Churchill as she enters now Parliament Square with a royal salute from the Guards of Honour. The procession will turn into that great palace yard and we can see 
the massive hall of Westminster waiting to greet the late sovereign. And we'll witness as she is taken from the gun carriage and carried into the heart of that hall.